guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most of you know me as CA Reptiles, and today's video is going to be the pros and cons of owning a jewel Lacerda. So as much as Arcadius, my iguana, is kind of the mascot of my channel, he's the one that everybody knows, he's the one that gets the most views on YouTube, a lot of people really love Crikey, my jewel Lacerda. I get people requesting more crikey everything. More crikey posts on Instagram, more crikey videos on YouTube. There's only so many crikey things I can do for YouTube without doing a care guide, and I'm not doing that yet. Everyone is begging me for a care guide, and I'm sorry guys, I keep putting it off. I know I wanted to wait a year. Yesterday, or a couple days ago, was officially a year of me owning Kaiki. However, I want to wait until I have his final enclosure before I do a care guide for you guys because Jeweled Lacerdos, there's not a lot of information out there about them. And owning him has been just a huge learning experience. And so I don't really want to preach care yet until I have him in his final enclosure. And yeah. So until that happens, which I'm hoping should be soon, I ideally would have liked to have it done a while ago, but I have to either find an enclosure or build an enclosure. So soon, hopefully. Um, but for now, he is in a 40 gallon breeder, which is the minimum. So totally fine, he's still growing. Um, but ideally he'll be in a four by two by two at least. So that's in the thought process, works, planning, whatever you wanna say. So no care guide yet. However, I am going to do the pros and cons of owning a jeweled Lacerda because a lot of you see Crikey and say you want one. And so as much as I can't tell you about the care yet or I don't want to tell you about the care yet, I can at least tell you the pros and cons of owning him. So of course I can't talk about Crikey without having Crikey here with me. So uh, let's go get him. Okay, so this is Crikey, my jeweled Lacerda. So we're gonna start off with the cons of owning a jeweled Lacerda because everyone thinks that because they're beautiful, it's rainbows and sunshine. And I don't wanna talk about the good parts of him until we get the bad parts out of the way. Because I feel like the cons of owning an animal are extremely important because that is what helps you decide whether or not you are cut out for that animal. So the first thing that I think is like the biggest con of these guys is that they are extremely shy, but also a little bit sassy. Now, just like any animal, their personality totally depends on the individual. But for the most part, as a species, jeweled lizards are very shy. Usually you walk in the room and they go and hide. Of course, with training and handling and you feeding them, they'll get used to you, they'll know you're bringing food, and they'll probably be a little less shy. Crikey has his days where he runs and hides when I walk in the room, but he also has his days where he watches me and he follows me and he's looking for food. Now they're also a bit sassy. They don't really like to be handled. Again, that can be something you work on with lots of training, um, but also just depends on the jeweled Lacerda. Crikey was starting to get really good and then he 180 and decided that he didn't want to be handled at all. <laughs> One of the only other videos I've seen on YouTube of jeweled Lacerdas was one that Clint put out Clint's Reptiles um, and that jeweled Lacerda was totally calm. He referred to it as a mini Tegu. That jeweled Lacerda, crikey, looks like a little demon compared to that Lacerda. <laughs> but of course, as you can see, once he calms down, he will just let me hold him. Um, he just has to get out of his enclosure and calm down. So he is a work in progress. Ideally, I would like him to be an education animal in the future, um, but he needs to be better with handling before that happens. So con number two is they have very sharp nails. As you can see, I'm wearing gloves. If you guys have been following me a while, you know I hate wearing gloves to handle animals. It makes me feel like a pansy and I just feel like I don't really have good control over the animal. I can't feel the animal. I hate using gloves. However, I took him out one time to clean his enclosure and it was a day that he really didn't want to be handled and he tore my hands to shreds. 
I was bleeding everywhere when I was once I finished up and went and cleaned my hands I ended up with like 12 band-aids overall on my hands because I was bleeding and torn apart and that was when I decided gloves are gonna be a thing at least until he's better with handling because They've got very, very, very sharp little nails. And he's not exactly an animal that I can just sit around and trim his nails because he's not quite calm enough for that. Not like Arcadius. I can trim my iguana's nails. Nice. So con number three is that they do eat bugs. Now for a lot of people, this isn't an issue, but some people don't like having to buy bugs, don't like having to store bugs, don't like having to deal or feed with bugs. So for some people, Having to feed bugs like crickets or roaches or worms can be a con. So they are omnivores. They do eat a lot of different things, but bugs primarily make up their diet. Con number four is that they need a really big enclosure. They're a pretty, pretty decently sized lizard. You can see Crikey. Crikey is a pretty big boy. Um, so they're pretty big lizard and need a big enclosure. I would say at least a four by two by two, which like I said, is in the plans for him. Um, so again, for some people that's not an issue, but for other people they don't have to deal with getting something as big as a four by two by two. Con number five is that they do require UVB. Like most reptiles, they need a basking spot, they need a gradient. That, that I'm not counting that as con, that's not an issue because most reptiles need that. However, he does need a UVB and a very, and UVBs in general, when you need a UVB, you want to get a high quality UVB that's going to cost you a bit of money. So currently he has a mega ray, but he's going to be switching to an Arcadia. Um, so I have the bulb, I just need the fixture and I was waiting for his new enclosure to give it to him, but it's taking a lot longer to find an enclosure than I was planning. So I'm probably just gonna end up giving it to him anyway because he's due for a new UVB. The next con kind of goes along with them being shy, and that's that they love to dig. So you want to provide your jewel disorder with at least like six inches of substrate, and they love to dig. So you probably won't see them very often, especially when they run away. When you walk in the room, they're going to go bury and dig and hide. They probably already have some sort of tunnel hole that they can run right into when you walk in the room. So... Yeah. Next con is that they live for about 12 to 20 years. So they are a long-term pet. So you have to be ready to commit to about 20 years of caring for this lizard, even if it hates you. Next con is that they do need kind of higher humidity. You don't want to be too dry in there. You need to be able to maintain the humidity that they require. The next con, which has been the biggest con for me, even worse, than getting torn to shreds is the fact that their enclosure setup is the perfect breeding grounds for bugs. And by bugs, I mean crickets. So at one point, I tossed in crickets for Crikey to give him enrichment, give him things to chase. He loves to chase crickets, so it was a lot of fun to watch. At one point, he missed some and they escaped him and they lived in his enclosure and bred and laid eggs and those eggs hatched. So I moved to this apartment and after about two weeks of living in this apartment, I heard chirping coming from his enclosure. Now mind you, once I moved, I never fed crickets. My doobie roaches have been breeding totally fine. My superworms are breeding and I still buy some from doobieroaches.com. I have mealworms for treats. I buy black soldier fly larvae. I buy hornworms. I do not buy crickets anymore. I have not once bought crickets since moving here. So tell me why I was hearing chirping from his enclosure. <laughs> so one night I looked in with a flashlight and sure enough, there was little pinhead crickets running around. So that was when I did a deep clean of his enclosure and got torn to shreds because I took out all of the substrate I took everything in his enclosure and I soaked it in the bathtub and watched all the little crickets float to the top. And I scrubbed everything. I thought I was good. Two weeks later, more chirping. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. And also cleaning out the substrate, I found lots of superworm beetles. I found superworms that were pupating. It was just, it's, 
try to keep your bugs in a dish or you're gonna have burning bugs in their enclosure. The next con is that these guys are hard to find. They're not a very expensive lizard. You just don't come across them very often. I looked for a jeweled lizard forever before finding him at an expo. Him and one other jeweled lizard were the only ones I'd ever seen at an expo. And it was the very last table at the back of the expo. So I'm very lucky that I found him and that I got to him in time. I have people all the time messaging me asking how they can find one because they can't find one anywhere. My answer is I searched forever before finding him. So it's not going to be easy. Not going to be easy. So another con for these guys is that they can drop their tail. But they don't really readily do this. It's not like they're go-to. I mean, they've got their nails, they can bite, but they can drop their tail. So you do want to keep that in mind when handling, but Crikey never seems ready to drop that tail of his. But that is just another con. And the final con that I'm going to mention is that they are ridiculously fast. So if you have one that doesn't want to be handled, it can be very difficult, especially when they're younger. When they're larger, they're a bit easier to manage because there's more body to hang on to. But young ones are so much smaller, it's much harder to handle them when they're trying to get away from you. So because of that, I actually wasn't able to handle Crikey before I purchased him and brought him home. Um, because, you know, I picked it up and I, well, originally I just asked to see him, meaning can I hold the tub and look at him? And the guy was like, you can't hold him. He's too fast. He's going to get away. And I'm like, well, I, I know that. I just want to inspect him. I want to take a good look at him. I want to look at his colors, make sure he's the one that I want. And, um... So yeah, I didn't get to hold him prior to bringing him home because odds are if we opened that container at the expo, he would have darted out and would have been gone. So they are very, very fast. Hey, shh. Hey, calm down. Calm down. I took off my glove, so I was not prepared for this. Like I said, they're fast. So now that we've covered the cons, we're gonna go into the pros because as much as there is a long list of cons to holding to having these guys, he is one of my favorite animals that I have. So obviously the number one pro is that these guys are absolutely gorgeous. You guys know I love everything to be blue and green. My animals are no exception. My iguana is blue, he's blue and green. See if I can get what you guys see without him going absolutely ballistic. So you can see he is absolutely gorgeous. Those colors are beautiful. I know it's kind of bright and stressful. You'll be done soon. This is your handling for the day and then you're all done. But we need to work on your handling. And on top of that, they are so much fun to watch, especially if you have one that's not too shy and it's exploring or it's hunting crickets, or it's watching you once it gets used to you. They're a lot of fun to watch. I enjoy just, he's next to my bed. I'll just sit in bed and I'll watch him explore and run around and they're just, they have such personalities, which is another pro is that these guys have huge personalities. So I also said they eat lots of things. They're an omnivore. That's another pro. Once in a while, you can give them a treat of some sort of fruit or something. I will occasionally give them a treat of a fruit or give them a treat of like a scrambled egg or part of a scrambled egg. So it's a lot of fun to be able to give him little treats here and there besides just your typical healthy bugs. Kind of gives him variety, mix it up. Now as much as their temperament and them being fast and not really handleable is a con, a pro is the more you work with them, the greater there is a possibility of them calming down and being good at handling. Because I mean, you are working on it, but I can take my hand off of him occasionally and just hold him like this. And he's not trying to get away from me or run away. Um, so like I said, we are working on it. We are making progress. You can see he's just, he's sitting here. He's not running away the first chance he gets. So that is really good progress for us. So the more work you put into it, the more you will benefit from it. Of course, depending on the individual Lacerda, but it is possible to tame them down and have them be readily able to be handled, like the one in Clint's Reptiles videos. Another pro is their size. They're not ginormous, but they're not small. They're like a medium-sized lizard. 
So they're like a really good size if you want something that's a little bigger, but not ginormous. So the next pro goes along with the Ming Fun to watch and that's that they're diurnal. So they're awake during the day when we are and out exploring, exploring, exploring. So you'll get to see them during the day. Even if you have a shy one, you know, catch them at the right time. They're gonna be awake and out and about during the day. Unlike things like crested geckos who sleep all day and come out at night when you're going to bed. Another pro is they're literally like a little crocodile. Like if you look at that face, he literally looks like a crocodile, which is how he got the name Crikey. RIP Steve Irwin, legend that man was. So yeah, they're literally like a mini crocodile. And the last pro that I'm going to mention is that they are severely food motivated. So that is a really good thing to use to your advantage to gain trust and work on handling. They absolutely love food. So it's always great when you have an animal that has some sort of motivational quality to it that will help you, in this case, food. Yeah, those are all my pros and cons to owning a jeweled Lacerda. I hope that gave you guys kind of some insight into caring for them and having them as a pet. Even though I'm not putting out a care guide yet, I hope that kind of gave you guys a little bit of information on them. So if you guys have any questions about Crikey, or dual desertas, you can leave them in the comments below. Um, as long as not too, too care related. Um, because like I said, I don't wanna get quite into that yet, but you know, simple questions, I'm more than happy to answer because I am pretty confident in how I care for him. But like I said, I just wanna wait until he's in his final enclosure. Um, but yeah, so as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss more videos. And we'll see you for the next video.